You're tuned in to Ask the Master Auto Technician. Car questions? Get answers right now. Call 850-763-0555. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed. Beep, 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 beep. Hey, welcome back. This is James Morris. Uh, this is a special edition of our show right here. I'm interviewing Adrian Wiley. He's a gubernatorial candidate uh, running for on the Libertarian Party, running for governor and next year. And I know what you're going through because I'm running for a little small office in our uh, city council in Parker. So I know about running for office. It seems like it's a never ending job. You want to talk to people. Anna Marie, what you got there? I have a question for Mr. Wiley. Is uh, Earl is on line two, so I'm going to let Earl ask his question. All right, Earl, what's your question for Mr. Wiley? More. Morning, James. Morning, Mr. Wiley. Yes, sir. Your position on the uh, industrial hemp, I like that. Now, we've got a boondoggle going on. I heard James talk about it, about this uh, alcohol fuel plant put in Tampa. Yes, sir. To process corn. To me, it makes no sense to move corn from the Midwest to Tampa. That's ridiculous. Northwest Florida's stagnating. Now, my question is, how do you feel about heavy industry here you, using the hemp as a fuel Alcohol fuels, we got it, we got to use it. And the also provide the industry for repairing or modifying the engines and fuel systems to use it. Because I believe that would be a boon here to the north, Northwest Florida instead of sex and drugs. <laughs> I believe it would be a boon. It would bring in a lot of money and jobs. Are you yeah, Earl's to say, not a big spring break. Are fan. you trying to say spring break brings in sex and drugs? How dare you, Earl? <laughs> Well, slap me on the hand and kiss me twice. <laughs> Welcome to Panama City. Yep. <laughs> okay, but, what, Adre, but that's, okay, that's a good question. That's there. my question. I'll take it off there. Well, thank, thank you. you. That's a good question. Uh, what, do you, what do you say about industrial hemp in Northwest Florida instead of growing trees? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm a big proponent of that. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think it even takes uh, much of a, a major change in the law to accomplish that. I mean, uh, Hemp is a, a fantastic industrial material. It's got uses in energy, uh, manufacturing, all kinds of areas. And so, yeah, I would be a strong supporter of industrial hemp as a, uh, as a material that is, is grown and produced here in Florida. Well, one of the reasons I'm for it is people say, well, if we take we take, start raising that instead of trees, it'll destroy the paper mill. No, right now it'll make the paper mill probably more competitive because they won't have to use so much chemicals to make it where they can bleach it to turn it into paper. It's a lot easier and, and to digest and, to, and then taking pine trees and chipping them up. I live near the paper mill. And I grew up in a paper mill town in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Uh, I know about paper mills here in Panama City and my sister lives in a paper mill town. We know how it's done and I really think it would be a boom to our economy because you can take 40 acres of land will produce more uh, energy, more oil, more tree, uh, me, more paper products than 200 acres of trees. It's just exactly. amazing. It's just amazing. And I, I, I post that a lot on my Facebook and some of my friends said, James, you keep putting on there, they'll come bust your doors down because you're trying to advocate this. I said, you can't get high off industrial hemp. We're the only industrialized country in the world that's made it illegal. It just, it's, it doesn't get you high. It just is a great, our constitution was written on hemp paper and our bill of rights was written on hemp paper. Why can't we use it? I, I, I just don't understand it. It just drives me crazy. Anyway, I agree completely. I just drives me crazy. Uh, if, there, if we don't have any other questions, if we got any more questions, Anna Marie, if you got a question, please give us a call 763-0555. The reason I, I, I want to let people know what's going on, I, there is a choice out here, but in order to vote for any candidate in the state of Florida, we're what we call a closed primary state. I like to let people know about how the laws are. In order to vote for a Republican or a Libertarian or a Democrat, you have to be registered in that Pacific party to be able to vote for them in the primaries. So I'm not telling people to change, but if you want to vote for this gentleman, you have to be registered as a Libertarian. Is that correct, Mr. Wiley? That is correct, in the primary. And we do expect to have a statewide uh, primary election for governor uh, on the Libertarian ticket for the first time in Florida's history. So that's something we're very excited that, that about. That is what I understand, which is, uh, it's, un it's unprecedented. I don't remember any time anyone having a third, other than Ross Perot maybe, I think that was the last time I remember a third party candidate actually getting on the uh, candidate, and that was for a national election. But this is for a state uh, governorship, and we've never had that before, have we? Uh, uh, as far as I know, there's never been a statewide uh, third party uh, um uh, primary election. Well, so who's, that's, who's uh, going like to be on the other side? We, we know it's going to be Governor Scott, of course, on the Republican Party. You're going to, well, right now, we, you're, is there anybody else in the Libertarian Party that's going to be running against you? Is there any other candidates that are trying to jostle for this position? 
Uh, there is one other announced candidate and uh, also uh, uh, potentially a third candidate uh, that is considering it. So okay. it could very well be a three-way primary. Well, and, and that's what's great. Yeah. So if we can get people that are doing it for the, the right reasons instead of trying to figure out how to make their pockets lined a little bit better, I think we'd have a better system of government than we have right now. But it seems like we got the government we deserve because, well, we've not paid any attention to what they're doing. They, we watch the shiny object up here while they're doing something that we can't see, it seems like, and everyone seems to be happy, as so long as we keep everybody happy and fed. And Anyway, circuses and bread. There I go again, deviating from there. I shouldn't get that way, but I do. I get passionate about it. But I want to see people know more about you. And if they want, I'm sure you've got a website out there. What is? Oh, absolutely. What is your website, Mr. Wiley? It's wileyforgovernor.com, and that's W Y L L I E F O R Governor. Dot com. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, right now I'm, I'm traveling all over the state. I expect to be doing a tour up in the Panhandle very soon. Uh, this coming week I'm uh, down in southeast Florida. Uh, so I, I just want to tell your listeners this is not just some uh, you know little third-party uh, candidacy no, here. No. This is for real, and we are, we are really going to fight this tooth and nail to restore economic freedom and individual liberty in Florida. If I understand correctly, the Libertarian Party is the third largest party in the United States. Right behind, That's correct. right behind the Republican Party, you got Democratic Party is the largest. Uh, Republican Party is second, and not far behind, but far behind is the Libertarian Party. Now I know that in the Republican Party right now there is a civil war going on. We don't talk about it out in public because we don't like to air our dirty laundry out there. But there is a civil war going on. There's a liberty arm of the Republican Party that's a lot like the Goldwater Republicans were. You know, peace and prosperity, and you know, in the Fed, and that's in the Republican Party, and they're trying to be squashed. They're trying to be silenced. They're trying to be, hey, you know, just go to your corner and leave us alone. You know, well, some of them just saying just go away, but they're not going away. They're hanging in the Republican Party because they want to see them change their ways and become a better party. But I have a feeling that they may be dropping out is what I'm scared of is what's going to happen. That's what I'm, and they may be joining the Libertarian Party, which God forbid what happens to the Republican Party. When that happens, it may go the way of the Bull Moose Party, which is the scary part. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's the thing, James. Uh, the Libertarian Party of Florida has grown by over a thousand percent uh, in the last year alone, and uh, we work closely with groups like Campaign for Liberty, Republican Liberty Caucus, uh, uh, Young Americans for Liberty, Young Republicans, and uh, that's what we're seeing. And the you know the reason is that the Republican establishment is uh, basically turned into the, uh, the party that has the same core principles as the Democrats these days. So you you've got a choice uh, with the establishment Republicans of big government versus the Democrats' big government. Okay. And uh, the Libertarian Party is the only one saying, let's reduce the size and scope of government. Same snake, two different heads. Uh, <laughs> yep, exactly. we got a, we, we got on, Anna Marie? I have May online, too. She'd like to ask uh, Mr. Wiley a question. All right, May, go, what's your question for Mr. Wiley? Well, I'd like to know, uh, I'd like to know what he's going to plan on the TSA presence, but also I'd like to ask him about saying no. Okay. <laughs> saying no about what? Drugs? Saying, uh, no, no, not at all. Just when it's not constitutionally uh, correct, uh, you say no and you stand your way. You're gone. Uh, you like, know, you like stand where are you, like where uh, are you going? Street. Like where are you going? You know, where have you been? Things like that. Show yeah, I, you can't do this because it's not constitutionally. You know, and uh, yeah. and. Uh, I agree. It's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. We should be securing our person's place and properties. I know. It's like I come from the land of no. You're not going to do this because this is a violation of the Fourth Amendment or whatever, or the Second Amendment. But uh, also, you know, the TSA needs to, to leave. Well, what is, what, what, Mr. Wiley, what is your viewpoint? we got about two minutes left. Uh, what do you think about the... Uh, uh, the TSA or Department of Homeland Security's uh, enveloping tentacles throughout our society now with the fascist it's, military It's state. terrifying, quite frankly. It uh, the, the TSA is security theater. Uh, it does nothing to solve the problem, and all it does is, is violate the rights of the American people. Uh, I worked, uh, spearheaded an effort back in 2011 with uh, Sheriff Richard Mack mm. to try to convince all 67 Florida sheriffs to tell the TSA that if they continue to violate the Fourth Amendment of the citizens of Florida, they will be subject to arrest. Unfortunately, uh, the Florida Sheriff's Association uh, turned us down. But my position on saying no, I have 
four conditions for any bill that reaches my desk. And if it doesn't meet these four conditions, it's vetoed. And the first and foremost of those is, is it constitutional under both the United States Constitution and Florida, and the Florida Constitution? Right. Next one is, can we afford it? Mm-hmm. Next one is, uh, uh, is it necessary? And the next one is, does it address the root cause? of the problem, or is it just something to make the legislators feel good? And if the answer, if it doesn't meet all four of those criteria, it's going to get vetoed. And I'll probably, as governor, veto more uh, more bills than any uh, governor in Florida's history. Well, you know, I, I, I've said someone, someone said if for every bill that they approve, they need to get rid or every law they approve, they need to knock two off the books. <laughs> <laughs> I went, okay, well, I like that idea. That. Yeah. <laughs> I like that idea. Mr. Wiley, it's been a pleasure talking to you. We only got a few seconds left. I know I hear the music's going to be starting in the background in a few minutes, seconds, but I want to thank you so much. We want to encourage you to call. I know that uh, I think uh, Dayton is going to try to get you on next week in the earlier show that comes on talk radio. And I would love to hear more of what you have to say. I think Northwest Florida needs to hear what you have to say. And we're going to encourage uh, Mr. S- Governor Scott to give us a call as well. Thank you so much for calling, sir. We appreciate Thanks, that. All right, this is James. Morris will be right back after the news. James Otto Center, we fix it right.